In the last video, you saw how we created a Microsoft Teams app and configured it to serve up a bot that's going to implement SSO so that we can obtain an access token for Microsoft Graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm in the uh, server folder. We're going to create a new folder here called SSO bot. And in this, we're going to create a new file here, a new folder in this called helpers. So inside the helpers file uh, folder, I'm going to create a new file here called SSO OAuth helper.ts. And in this, I'm going to go ahead and just paste in a, a bunch of code. Now, let me explain what this code is doing. The SSO auth helper class contains the following two methods. It contains a method here called should process uh, exchange token. This determines if the activity sign in slash token exchange should be processed by this caller. That's defined uh, right here in this value that we're importing in, as you can see on line six above. Token exchange operation name is really just a constant um, that is part of the bot builder uh, package. And that's that refers to the actual activity uh, called sign in slash token exchange. Um, if this does exist, if this is if this is present uh, for this activity, it calls the other method exchange token that you see here. So what does exchange token do? Well, this attempts to retrieve an access token from the bot's OAuth connection configuration in the bot framework registration. This is done by specifying the connection name that we've specified. Um, and that is done, if you scroll down a little bit here, we can see the connection uh, string that we have listed right here on the token exchange request. Now, if this fails, then the bot is unable to exchange the token. So the bot notifies the sender that the precondition failed. Um, and the bot then uses this to prompt the user to consent to the sign in prompt. And we're going to see that when we actually run this the first time. Now, the next thing is I need to add another helper uh, for obtaining data from Microsoft Graph. So I'm going to create a new file here called the MS Graph Helper. .ts, and I'm going to go ahead and paste in some code into this. This code, after initializing the graph client by setting the access token that we can see right here um, that's used in all the requests, the helper class includes two methods to retrieve the currently uh, signed in user, uh, get his details or her details, and the most recent emails that that person has received by submitting the request using the graph client and returning those values back. So within the SSO bot folder, I'm gonna create a new folder here for dialogues. These are gonna hold all the dialogues and prompts that are gonna be used by our bot. So the first one is gonna be a logout dialog.ts. This is gonna serve as the base dialog for our bot. All the other dialogues are gonna inherit from this one ultimately. So we're going to paste some code in here. Let me explain what this does. What this dialog does is it checks, it, it, it performs a check for the text logout. So you can see here we have this interrupt method. So when the dialog begins or when it continues, it's going to call our interrupt function. So it, what that does is that's going to then grab the contents out of the uh, message. It's going to strip everything out of it and it's going to look for just the text of logout and lowercase or uppercase. So it's going to pull that out. Um, if it finds that string, what it's going to do is it's going to sign out the user uh, out of the session and cancel any pending dialogues as you see here. So send an activity, it says that you've been signed out and then it cancels all dialogues. Um, otherwise, it just returns a null value. And that's where if we don't get a result, then we continue on with the existing dialogue uh, request that we have. Now, the next dialog I'm going to create here is called the main dialog. So this is going to serve as the base dialog for our bot. This dialog is going to inherit from the logout dialog that you see here. It's going to inherit from the logout dialog and serve as the main router for our bot. So inside of the constructor for this one, it adds two dialogs to the bot. The first dialog that it's adding that you see here is the SSO auth prompt. And we're going to build that in just a minute. This is going to add extra logic to implement the S implement single sign-on for the OAuth prompt that is uh, the dialog that is included 
out of the box uh, with the bot framework. The other one that it's going to add is a waterfall dialog. And this adds a series of dialogues and steps to implement uh, the user experience once the user has completed the SSO process by signing into. Notice the last line in our constructor. Let's scroll down a little bit here. Notice the last line in our constructor uh, is going to set the dialog, the default dialog to our waterfall. That's the primary user experience of our bot that is you know, provided the user is actually signed in. And then I want you to also take notice of another method here called display Microsoft graph data step. This has been added to the waterfall dialog. So this, this one that you see here, if I scroll up and look at the waterfall dialog, you can see that after the prompt, that's where this step is being added. This step is going to use the access token that was obtained from the bot framework support for OAuth to support requests to Microsoft Graph. So now let's implement the prompt dialog that's going to wrap the bot framework provided OAuth prompt class so that we can add support to it. So in this dialogs folder, I'm going to add a new file here called SSO OAuth prompt.ts. And in this file, I need to implement just a single method on the base OAuth prompt class. This so we're inheriting from the base uh, OAuth prompt and we're implementing just the continue dialog method. This method is first going to check to see if the bot has previously exchanged the ID token but it's been provided by Microsoft Teams and saved it to the bot's cache. If it has, it's going to stop the current dialog. Otherwise, the bot will prompt the user asking them to sign in and complete any step up authentication requirements. For example, if they have to go through a multi-factor authentication. At this point, I can't implement the main part of our bot, the dialog bot class. I can Im implement the main part of our bot, the dialog bot class. So I'm gonna create a new file here inside of our bot called dialog bot. This is the main, uh, di the main uh, bot class that we're gonna use. This serves as the base for our bot. So I'm going to go ahead and paste some code in. Let's explain what's going on. Notice the constructor of the dialog bot class accepts the instance of a main dialog um, that our bot's going to pass into it. So when the bot receives a message, it's going to run main dialog. Now, the last step in creating our bot is to implement the bot itself. So I'm going to add a new file here to our SSO bot folder called SSO bot.ts and we'll paste some code in here. Now notice the constructor of the SSO bot. It extends the dialog bot that I just created and it creates an instance of the main dialog and passes that into the base class. Recall the base class dialog bot that accepts a dialog in its constructor. So this is how our dialogues are being loaded into the bot. The two other events that you see here uh, in this class or the two other methods in this class handle teams sign in token exchange and handle teams sign in verify state. These handle when two different invoke activities of type sign in token exchange and sign in verify state are received by our bot. The handler for the sign in token exchange activity uses the helper we previously created uh, to process the token that is received, if it should be processed. The token should only be processed once while the response is sent to every Microsoft Teams instance where the user is signed in. There could be multiple, but it should only be processed one time. 